Isn't that gorgeous? I love it when the sun hits the snow and everything just sparkles. It's just so pretty. Oh my goodness. Mm. Okay, I'll get out of your way. It's a cold, cold morning here. And uh, I'm not going outside. Probably not going outside all day because it's just nasty. <laughs> like I said to uh, my friend in Israel, looks nice from indoors unless you have something really fun or really important to do outdoors i'm not going outside in minus 15. <sighs> no not really okay so what am i doing it's saturday morning it's quarter to 10. i just finished da 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 da, -da you know my normal Saturday morning messing around stuff and I get to work. So by 10 o'clock I will start working. I've uh, put Julia in the bedroom because she insisted. So she's in there for a few hours. Ugh, dust. Um, Floyd was just out for some breakfast, so she's gone for the rest of the morning. So I have peace and quiet in the house. I just looked at myself in the mirror. This, this was a mistake, yes. So despite the fact that I'm not going out, I put some makeup on. Is that not just awful? My hair is not doing what I want. I'm not wearing the colors that I should be, and thus my face is not what I want to see in the mirror. Now, some days it's fine, some days it just isn't. Uh, uh, it's sad that we should feel like that, but whatever. You like yourself at a certain point, and at a certain point, you just wish you didn't have to see yourself. Um, so I'm at this point, or most of us, I imagine, at this point in winter, you finally figure out how you're supposed to run your body because winter requires a different um, attitude or, or lifestyle behaviors because if you don't do the right thing, your body falls apart in winter. Hey puppy. Um, it's dry and that affects everything. So, you know, your skin, your hair, your hands. Ugh. And it's not like I do things that are kind to my body. So I go swimming and I, you know, go into public. So a hand washing and just living in a house in the winter hard on your body. So you have to establish moisturizing to keep things, keep your skin, you have to drink, you know, uh, you know, a certain amount of water, you have to do stuff to your hair, you have to wear things. And, and then, you know, because I am out in the public and washing hands constantly, my fingers, my 
Yeah, I have had, I I was wearing a band-aid on that finger all week long because it had a hole in the front that was actually bleeding. And right now there are, you know, the cuticles are, some of them are uh, starting to fail me and your hands just feel so tender and sometimes in pain. And I'm not at the point yet where the cracks on the two sides of, of my thumbs are bleeding, but I probably will. This was the one that, that startled me because just I think I must have gotten a cut and then it kept going. So that, that was awful. So everything you touch is like, and how do you keep that clean? I mean, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then lips, right? Lips. And then, you know, the dryness. And I moisturized this morning. And then I looked at myself in the mirror and it didn't make any difference. And then the hair with the middle-aged style that, because I didn't use a certain, you know, a look because I made a decision. And so I'm not. When I make decisions, I shouldn't, you know, jump on them right away. I made the decision that I would uh, get my hairdresser to cut things extremely short and keep it that way, even shorter than it was. So no more of the spike, try and get it uh, to be short enough to be flat. So why did that mean I had to stop using my spiked look and my, you know, spiky uh, conditioner in the interim. Oh, because I thought that wearing a hat would just flatten my hair. Instead, my hair just, I have curly hair. I cannot just flatten it. So jumping into this decision made me look more middle-aged than I needed to. So, Like, is any of this in any way important? I should just get to work and avoid looking at myself in a mirror for the weekend. Oh. Still haven't got all the Christmas stuff away. I hope I can hop to it in a... Okay, Stevie. I have a co-worker who is less than amicable. And it's difficult to get along with her. She is touchy like you wouldn't believe. And with the rest of the world, I have no problem being friendly and getting along. With this woman, I can't say a word that doesn't get uh, snap that, you know? Because she takes everything the wrong way. So anyway, I sort of got, I don't know, I got her. Because with my own, every teacher gets a certain amount of money per class to spend on resources, books, whatever you want to buy. So I have had three classes for many years, so I always have a lot of money. So years ago, I bought this certain text and started using it. At that point, not everyone else was using it. Then other people got on the bandwagon and started using it. So my text was in the resource room um, for a number of years. So Nancy started using this resource and started thinking, well, <laughs> I don't know what she thinks. Anyway, I wanted to use it last year and she said that she was using it with, uh, the, with the afternoon class and could I use something else? And I'm like, yeah, I can use something else. And um, with the morning class, so I went on to the next level of that text, found it to be fine, and that's good. Started using it. In the meantime, Nancy continued using it. 
last year, last year I decided that this year I would use that text for my evening class, since I now had a higher level of student in my evening class. And I said to Nancy, could I have, and I, I went into the research room and I started looking for the text and the CD that went with it and had a really hard time. Finally assembled most of what I needed and said, uh, no, I said, I said this to Nancy before, uh, could you give me, yes, all right, I'm going to give you, tried to find it, couldn't find it. She um, obviously had it somewhere, said it to her, and she says, oh, oh, um, I've got that, I used that with my, I said, I'm trying to use it with my evening class, could I please have it? And she says, well, you know, you got to, I don't want that to be lost because I use it with my afternoon class. And I'm like, woman, like, whose resource is this? I mean, technically it's everybody's, but who brought it into this place? She didn't even know, but she didn't, yeah. this conversation was going on in my head, which is a problem. And she's going, well, I don't want it to be lost. And I'm like, I'm just looking at her. And I'm saying, no, I won't lose it. Like, I have never lost anything before. Why does she have it in her head that I would lose things? Later on in the day, she came back to me and apologized, her kind of apology anyway, and said that, and handed me the books and, and told me to be careful with them. And I'm still going. So I took the books and I was like, I'll give them right back to you. You know, how long can I? And basically got it out of it. She didn't really need them for a while. And I could have them for just about as long as I wanted, as long as I am. <sighs> then the other day I said to her, um, could I please have the CD that goes with that? Because I can't find that. And I'd like to put it on the computer and just, you know. And she says, oh yeah, okay, I'll, I'll look for that when I get a chance. Later on that afternoon, she I saw her looking for it and looking for it. She could not find it. So she finally, well, I didn't say the word lost, but damn it all if she hasn't misplaced that CD that I bought with my money, my resource originally. she lost and then asked me not to lose things. So that is why, Steve, I have a certain attitude towards the Nancy, yes. Anyway, power for now.